Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Hello Educator. Today's episode is from Mango Science Radio and it is from our science educator and communicator Obli Chandran. The story is titled Grapes at Uti. Hi, Mango Science Radio listeners. Uh, Obli Chandran here again. Hope you're all doing good today. I'm going to share a very interesting uh, experience that I had in uh, during one of my visits to Uti in 2016. So, uh, do not think this is not a, a, a visit to Uti uh, for a tourist purpose. And I enjoyed looking at some botanical garden or something. This visit to 2016 was to a research facility uh, in Uti called as the Cosmic Ray Laboratory. and uh, there is this experiment uh, that is going on uh, in uh, CRL cosmic ray laboratory called as the grapes 3 experiment uh, nothing to do with the fruit grape but it is uh, abbreviated as grapes uh, for uh, gamma ray astronomy at beta energies energy levels so yeah so until 2016 i was also of the idea that uti is uh, predominantly known for its uh, uh, tourist destination and people visit flock uti to enjoy the weather and you know uh, enjoy other things that is touristy but in 2016 i came to know of this facility and also i came to know of several other science research facilities that are found to be in uti and this research facility is particularly very interesting because there is something called as muon detector uh, it is a particle that comes from the atmo- uh, that, that gets created when cosmic rays hit the earth's atmosphere so that detector is uh, is in this place grapes tree experiment and that is the largest muon detectors uh, uh, or you can also call it a largest muon telescope in the world the largest muon telescope in the world that is sitting right next to my hometown in of coimbatore in uti that that i didn't know i i felt a little embarrassed rather back then i didn't know because i i was full time into teaching science and you know Uh, uh communicating science to the public and learning a lot of things but i didn't know about this so uh, anyway i was very lucky i was very fortunate to come to know of it and i also had the opportunity to to be invited by uh, atul jain sir and professor sunil gupta to attend one of the uh, most prestigious winter schools uh, that happens once in two years in uti called as the winter school of astro particle physics wapp wap so I was given an opportunity to uh, come attend it normally only students are allowed of course but since they saw uh, how much I was interested in science and I was trying to communicate science to the public they thought I might come and look at the entire event participate and cover the event um, and to the, so that it can be communicated to the public so I was very fortunate I just packed up my bags and left for Uti and remember it was in the month of December and uh, December 20 21 to 30 like for nearly for 10 days so I stayed there and just enjoyed Uh, the beautiful time that i had so there are a lot of experiences that i had during my uh, uh, stay f- uh, for the winter school of astro particle physics uh, there were scientists uh, the dignitaries who had come from across the world uh, and of course there was this professor srikantan sir he is a legend uh, he is one of the pioneers in the country uh, for cosmic ray uh, research so i got a chance to meet him there were several other things as well but i would like to draw your attention to couple of things couple of interesting things that i want to share and focus on one particular incident that uh, really gave me goosebumps rather so the b- before that i'll share you a very quick bit of uh, the first thing that i wanted to say so the students were chosen from across the country based on applications uh, that the students have to submit uh, to participate in this winter school and from across the country several thousands of applicants uh, were received and only 50 students were selected to participate and all these students will get to work in different experiments uh, uh in a collaborative mode like uh, you will have some student from computer science uh, department some student from physics department some student from electrical engineering department so all of these would be working as a team so there were eight teams totally eight to nine teams totally in a group of five or six so they were working together on different projects and the way they worked at these projects were entirely different from what we would have, i had experienced in school or my college time because in schools or in colleges the way the experiments work in a lab is that there is a predecided result that has to be arrived at at no matter what so you were not given the freedom to uh, tweak the uh, uh, input and see what how the output changes 
play around with the experiment to get a feel of how what goes on you are given a specific set of steps to reach the output and and it even if it means to tweak the data to get the desired result but that was not the case here it was wonderful to watch it in fact i was part of every team and i was also part of every experiment that was being done i was happy i was lucky it was a very nice experience for me but the most inspiring moment that i was talking about earlier came about in one of the uh, during one of the tea breaks so where uh, professor sunil gupta sir was there and there was he asked a lot of students all the students you know uh, to gather around a big table they had a huge uh, lawn and there was a table which was covered with a black cloth like a huge black cloth and nobody knew what was under the black cloth because we could see there was something under it but we did, none of us knew what was it so but we we all quickly gathered around the table and now professor sunil gupta said that this cloth the something under this cloth a lot of things under this cloth this would represent the history of something that is very important to cosmic ray lab so we were all excited what is he going to talk about then he just slowly lifted uh, the cloth at one side a little bit of it so he revealed something called this what we call as a scintillator a scintillator is nothing but a device that is used in the detectors to detect the charged particles that are entering so what the scintillator will do once the charged particle hits the scintillator it will emit light and that light will be collected eventually and be studied and analyzed to uh, understand the cosmic uh, ray or the charged particle so this scintillator purchased from uh, countries abroad because we didn't we were not making scintillators ourselves until 2000s uh, 2000 2003 we were not making it so it had to be imported but it was realized that cost was much higher it was much higher so uh, people at tfr were thinking on how to reduce the cost then they the one logical solution that are, are occurred to them is to make the scintillators ourselves but at then again the scintillators have are have to be of extremely high quality they have to be very sensitive to the what the purposes are so they'll have to experiment in building up the scintillators so the very first attempt of making our own scintillator happened in 2000 and the first the, the cloth that he lifted it revealed the very first attempt of the scintillators that they made so uh, sunil gupta sir uh, pointed to that so this is the very first attempt of us to make our own scintillators then he slowly lifted the cloth a little more revealing the second attempt third attempt and guess what it took 72 attempts so it was only in the 72nd attempt the scintillator was perfected so this happened between 2000 and 2003 so spanning over 3 years so in 3 years there was a lot of correspondence between ut and mumbai mumbai where uh, tafr is located and uh, this lab was in ut so a lot of correspondence you know for scintillators were being sent back and forth until it was perfected in 72nd attempt and guess what the scintillator that they made in the 72nd attempt after perfecting it costed 10 times lesser 10 times remember 10 times lesser than what it was Uh, when they were importing the scintillator this was a phenomenal achievement and this is something that gave me goosebumps as i was listening to it uh, right then he removed the entire black cloth so there were there were like at least not all 72 uh, attempts were put in display of course but there were at least 20 to 25 scintillators that were eventually perfected and the final one was also there the scintillator that they are right now using uh in the cosmic ray laboratory so this this was one of the uh, inspiring i'm sure it was inspiring for all the students who were there uh, to know that you know we were capable of doing it and we did it so well that eventually the scintillator that was made in the 72nd attempt was being exported to other countries this this when he said that i was like literally like like, like the hairs on my hands and stood up like it was goosebumps literally they were being exported to other countries who were using it for the same purpose similar purposes so this was something that i wanted to share with you guys um, the name of the lab is cosmic ray laboratory in uti the name of the experiment is grapes tree experiment and yes so maintained by uh, tifr tata institute of fundamental research so yes guys i hope you enjoyed it i'll uh, see you again with another interesting story or experience that i had in my journey of science for the last 6 to 7 years So see you until then bye We sincerely hope that you really like this episode we upload one science story every day 
and if you are a science enthusiast and you would like to contribute to mango science radio please whatsapp us at 9952243541 and uh, you can also share your feedback you know via a audio message over whatsapp that would really be helpful thank you again thank you so much for listening to uh, hello educator i will see you tomorrow